Hey, this is Stephen Ahmet. Welcome to my exorcism.io series. In this video, I'll be working through Twofer from the Ruby track. So this exercise, uh, Twofer is short for uh, two, uh, two for one, one for you and one for me. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a method that returns a string. Uh, it will either be one for you, one for me. Uh, or if we pass a name, it will be one for the name we pass and uh, one for me. So they have an example here, one for Alice, one for me. Let's go ahead and copy the download command and get started. Twofer, all right. Let's open up our test here. Uh, compared to the last one, the hello world test, you'll see there, there it doesn't have all of that verbose output here uh, at the end because it assumes we we kind of know what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and run the test. We'll see it fail because there's no twofer.rb file. Uh, so let's create it. Now you're, you're going to see that I have this same pattern in in all of these that I begin with. Um, I, I'm probably not going to talk through them in advance like I do even though I am thinking about the test and what's going to happen as I as I run it. But you'll see me do the same thing. I'll run the test, it'll fail because there's no file. I'll create the file and I'll run the test again. Uh, it'll, it'll fail because it can't find uh, the constant, in this case, twofer, because we haven't created the class yet. I'll create the class and then at that point, it's gonna fail for one of a couple of reasons, either because we don't have the class method that it's expecting, or in the case where it's looking for an instance method, uh, it, it could be that initialize takes, it doesn't take the, the same number of arguments that it's expecting uh, um, or some combination of those things. But anyway, in case I forget to talk through what I'm thinking and what I'm expecting, you'll see me running, running the tests. Um, hopefully I'll remember to talk about it, but sometimes I'm just gonna kind of run through. So we're at the point where I need to create twofer.rb and save that and get the, the next fail, failure about the constant. So let's create that and we will fail because we don't have a twofer class method. Right, undefined method twofer for twofer class. So let's, let's go ahead and create that inside of our class uh, self block twofer. And now we're going to fail because we return nil and the test, the one test is running accepts this, uh, expects the string one for you one for me. So we're going to fail. So let's go ahead and return what our test expects. And our test will be happy. There we go. All right. Now you'll notice that I, I didn't actually implement all the behavior that I know this method is going to need. That's because I am rigidly following uh, my TDD approach, right? It's like the test that I ran, this is what it expects. I don't want to make assumptions about uh, ahead of time about what my code needs to do. Hopefully the tests will be good. If they're not there, I might need to, I might need to extend them a little bit to really specify the behavior that I'm looking for. But I'm going to let them at the beginning guide me to the correct behavior. And then once, once the test is working, then we can look at or, uh, the code is working and the tests are passing, we can look at refactoring maybe to something better or more maintainable. But for now, let's just go down, let's run the next test here on line 10, and it's gonna fail because the string no longer matches. All right, uh, oh, surprise, it didn't fail because the string doesn't match, it failed because we have the wrong number of arguments given. Uh, this version expects to be able to pass a string, so if we, if we, we give it a name, It'll, this will get to the next step, but it's going to fail because the string doesn't match. But the first test is going to fail because of the wrong number of arguments. So real quick, let's just get past that by making it optional. Now we fail based on the string. You know, you could try to change the string to match, but your other test is going to fail. So, so what do you do? So we actually, these two tests are enough to uh, make us implement some, some actual logic here to make this method do, do what we want it to do. So clearly this bit, Alice, needs to be, uh, it, that, that's the only thing that changes in this string based on what we pass. So 
Let's, let's change this to an uh, interpolated string with name. In this case, we're going to see the second test is now going to pass. The first test is going to fail because it's returning the wrong thing. And there's, there's a few things we can do. We can, you know, what can we do here? We can do a uh, name um, or equals you, right? We could do something like that uh, where we check to see, have we been given a name? And if we haven't, we're going to set it to you. And that will make everything pass. But that, that's kind of a Ruby, Ruby thing to do. Uh, but... You know, in that case, we're doing too much work because we're uh, we're making this optional um, by giving it a nil up here. So really, the most straightforward thing to do is is actually just give it a default value of the string u, and that's going to make it pass. And that's actually going to be enough, I think, to make this this third test pass as well. And I want to tell you, this is. I mean, this looks like pretty. This looks pretty good to me. Uh, I, th I think it's simple. It's straightforward. It reads clearly. Um, you know, if you have any suggestions for refactorings, maybe drop them in the comments. But otherwise, I think this is this is what I'm going to go with at least for a first result. And you know, I, I use the Exorcism um, app as sort of a, sort of a version check. I, I've seen some people do things like they'll create a version method or something down here to keep track of which is which but I think I showed you in the other video that when you submit one of these you can submit any number of them and you get you can go back and check kind of each one but let's go ahead and submit this go check it out I have a feeling most of the solutions are just like this uh, some people might prefer a different version of defining a class method besides putting it in this block. I just like doing this. Uh, it's a little cleaner and clearer to me than than doing self dot twofer or twofer dot twofer or something something like that. Um, aha! So let's see. Next steps. Well done on submitting your iteration. A mentor will check out. Oh, I should not be on the mentor to track. So I guess this is what's going to happen. Uh, so tell you what, I'm going to pause I'm going to see if I can change that away from the mentored version okay so I looked around a little bit um, and realized that I am actually in independent mode which made me makes me think that this this might be a bug I, I went to github and I saw there were some recent commits uh, around this since I recorded the hello world video and I think maybe something got um, something got messed up in that process. You know what? This is uh, this is kind of just part of part of being a developer. Is stuff like this happens. So I'll I'll connect with them and see um, see if uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding something. And this is like this is expected behavior now for everybody or not. In the meantime, I'm just gonna go back to the Ruby track here and continue on with. The next exercise.